Hi, and welcome to a quick guide to get you started on your Naked Brutality Ice Sheet run. These tips and tricks come from hundreds of hours of experience on the Ice Sheet, and currently I am doing an Ice Sheet run on 500% Naked Brutality with Randy Random, and all research deleted on Twitch. Link in the description below. I've had multiple people ask for advice to get through the first few days, so I thought I'd show you. For this guide I've turned all the mods off, so you can easily follow it, but there's a few mods that can help you out immensely. But I'll link those mods in the pinned comment below with a short description of what they are and what they do so you can easily find them back. So without further ado, let's get you started. Alright, first you get a seed going. Global coverage is not important, neither is rainfall. Put temperature on low to get more landing options. Put population high to get more settlements and thus trade options nearby. And I hit start. Now you want to find yourself a nice little spot in this cold world. Every kind of tile works, but to make it easy, we'll just go into the mountains. This spot here has a friendly tribal and outlander faction, as well as an empire settlement, so plenty of future trade options for us. It has marble and granite. Marble is a stone type with the highest beauty, and granite has the most HP. The temperature is not too bad, so you gotta keep in mind that the warmer it gets, the higher the chance of infestation is. The map also has caves, where you can steal jelly. In advanced options, I like to make the map slightly bigger to have more space to build in the mountains, but it does make your game a bit harder since the animals might be further away. Oh, and start in the summer, since it's slightly warmer and you got some more time before hypothermia takes your toes. And now we can get started. Your starting pawn will make all the difference. You want to make sure that your pawn has a high mining skill and a high average construction skill. The cannibal trade is nice too. High intellectual is good once you have a starter base going, and the high melee is not necessary. But it's a nice little bonus when you club snow hairs. The first thing you want to do is to find yourself a geyser close to a steel vein and mine out three blocks. Traits like Sanguine or Steadfast will make your run much easier since you will have less breakdowns. Make sure you keep an eye on your health depth since hypothermia will be creeping up on you. Your pawn will be shivering until 20% hypothermia, then it will become minor. At 35 it turns serious. Keep in mind that your pawn will be slower and worse with construction, the more severe the hypothermia level gets. Now we got some steel, we will build ourselves a little oven. Don't mind the gaps in the corner, it doesn't matter. This location is perfect since it's not super far away from the insect hive. It is smart to start with the door while your hypothermia level isn't too severe yet, so the chance of botching up the most expensive piece is a bit smaller. Now our house slash oven is done, we will just forbid the door and stay in there for a while to warm up. Look, the hypothermia goes down. You don't want to be in there for too long or you'll burn yourself or you might even pass out from a heat stroke. And now you want to slap down and butcher a construction in the sleeping spot. Pause! Post production is pretty near. You should replace the sleeping spot for the bed right after you got your first food. I usually stream the naked brutality runs with all the research deleted so I don't start with beds researched. So I completely forgot. This is my bed. Let's get back to the video. You can't make a butcher table yet, since even if you make it out of steel, you'll still need 20 wood. With a butcher spot, you will not gain as many materials, but it's better than nothing. So now we craft a club out of 40 steel. You could fist fight the rabbits if you want, but a weapon is nice to have, since Randy could just give you an infection right after the rabbit bit your ankle. Also, don't forget to allow those tasty humans to be butchered either in your butcher spot. Like I said before, keep an eye on your hypothermia. I'm closing the door so I can warm Spratini up a little bit quicker before I send them out to do some clubbing. You don't want to be caught far away from the base with hypothermia since it will slow you down and eventually kill you. Next we look for a cluster of rabbits that are close to each other and not too far away from our base. Like these two. That one is most likely to be reachable, but let's not risk it for now. Keep in mind that the rabbits will leave the map after the first night since they cannot find any food. So do not put this off for too long. It fall back, but don't worry, it's not the rabbit from Monty Python. Just enable self-tending and we're good to go. If you get an infection, give your pawn as much of bed rest as possible and tend in the light, but there would be a high chance of you dying because we're still early in the run. First, we're gonna hold the rabbit back to our stockpile and then tend to our wounds in our little oven, so we'll deal with our wounds as well as our hypothermia at the same time. And now comes a part where everyone has a different opinion on. The butcher spot doesn't give as much food or height as the butcher table, so a lot of meat is lost. Eating the rabbit rare will actually provide us with more food than butchering the rabbit, but it will also give us a higher mood penalty. Butchering it will give us less food, but a less high mood penalty and a little bit of height. Personally, I only butcher the rabbits using the butcher spot if I know that I have some food to spare. Right now, just south of us is an insect hive. 
at night we can steal the jelly and eat that too. Therefore, I butcher the rabbit in the hope that I can prevent the mental breakdown. But if you play without a hive, it is best to just eat the entire rabbit. Just make sure you eat them once your food is below 10%. Sadly, the insects ate their jelly just before they went to sleep. But if you keep an eye on it, more might spawn before the break of dawn. Keep an eye on the rest level of the insects. You don't want them to wake up during the heist and have you for breakfast instead. Take the jelly out of the cage before they wake up. Let's eat it so our food and recreation level will rise, and thus our mood. A breakdown, but don't worry, it's a tantrum. Which means that he wants to smash things up that we build, and we will remove the jellies from the cave, so he has no reason to go in there. As long as he stays inside, he'll be warm. Now the wall broke, he will get hypothermia. Just queue up a new one and he'll fix it once he snaps out of it. There we go. Don't leave the jelly. The insects will still eat it. Time to warm the poor dude up again. Now we have dealt with the hardest part the first day, we can start focusing on the future. We have a minor food source right now, the insects, which is nice. You might want to wall them in to prevent traders from passing through and getting in a fight with them, but that's up to you. Don't forget to seal the jelly every night. It keeps you fat and entertained. Build yourself a little freezer where you can store food away from animals. This spot is perfect. The next thing we have to do is to turn our little oven shed into a base where we can close the door and be at a comfortable temperature. Don't attach it to your freezer as the freezer will warm up through the wall. There's no best or perfect size, it always works since it depends on the temperature outside. For me right now it's relatively warm, it's around a negative 10 degrees celsius, so I can make it fairly big. But what I'm doing instead is I'm not going to make it too big. I will remove some roof tiles so sunlight can get into the base, that way I can plant some potatoes and they will actually grow. You can farm on the ice sheet. Visitors, this gives us a great but risky opportunity to boost our survival chances. They both have guns and crappy melee skills, so we can fight them. One is tough, but also a wimp. Just to be safe, I'm gonna try and kill one of them, but I have to wait for them to leave the map and attack in the exact moment that one already left the map while the other one is still on it. This is fairly tricky, since you can't wait too long at the bore of the map or you will die of hypothermia. It would be best to kill the trader, since he's also carrying the merchandise, but we can't be too picky. If I kill them and wear their clothing, I will not have to worry about our way back. The timing of this is tricky, so I recommend saving if you do not play in commitment mode. We're going for the one on the left, since they seem a little bit behind. The timing could not be better. Now we just gotta win the fight. We do have the advantage here with a melee weapon and a high melee skill versus a gun and a low melee skill. Victory! Now quickly put on the clothes. Check out that comfortable temperature range. That issue is solved. However, all this tainted clothing will lower our mood, so we will have to keep an eye on that. Let's equip the revolver and take the food home with us first since there's a wolf nearby that might just try and steal it. We're in luck, Uber Eats has arrived and they have 8 hours left before they die, so we can strip them and get some proper clothing. There we go, now our mood will not be affected by tainted clothing anymore. Alright, back to our plan. We can remove some roof tiles to get the light in sight and plant some potato plants in the stony soil. You can't survive just off of them, but they will help you out for a minimum effort. And this is why the cannibal trade is so great. Usually you will get hit with a negative 20 mood penalty if you eat human meat, but as a cannibal you will get a 20 mood boost instead, which is insane. Mental breakdowns and starvation are your worst enemy in the start, and this counters both of them. Of course we'll have to deal with real enemies soon too, so build traps just in case you have to lure one of them in. And don't forget your horseshoe pin to keep your recreation up, now you're no longer eating jelly. So now you are all set to get you through those hard first days. There's one more thing you can do, but it will spike your wealth. The thing would be opening the ancient danger. 
I will show you quickly how to do it by yourself in a relatively safe way, but this is by no means a requirement to get started. There's a very specific trick that I use. You want to open this block. Do you see that there's a mountain piece on the right side that will enable us to look inside without them being able to attack us immediately, as sometimes they don't even get triggered. Ah, first rate. That doesn't matter, we can even utilize this by luring enemies from the ancient danger to the raider if push comes to shove. There we go, you see that? Now we can look directly into the ancient danger, see all its secrets and the enemies will not be able to attack us. You want to shoot the crypto sleep casket, there's a chance that there are hostiles or friendlies in there and it will fight the insects for you. But Randy will not blast us today, they're all downed. Let's lure these insects out of the ancient danger so we can strip the down people and take their gear. Sadly no guns, but I do see marine armor. By shooting at them, we can lure them away from the ancient danger. Maybe in the meantime we can use them to take care of the pesky raider. This can be a lengthy progress of kiting and shooting. At least we will take care of the raider here. Strip them and take the clothing out of the ancient danger. We can't equip the marine armor because it will slow us down and we need to be faster than those insects. They are too close, we won't be in time. Let's drop the armor and get out of here. We'll try and lure them away and then grab the armor later. Several minutes of kiting later, they gave up and fell asleep. Let's take our spoils and head home. So now you got the hardest days behind you. To continue you will need to make a research bench, give your poor pawn a chair to sit on, plan a butcher table for once you get 20 wood, and steal a table from a nearby ruin. In this layout, the chairs will serve multiple stations. This is both cost and space effective. Also, don't forget that your pawn will get bored of the horseshoe pin, so you need a different kind of recreation type, like a chess table. Your next few steps will include a lot of research. You want to research battery so you can store electricity. Then you want to research hydroponics so you can become self-sufficient. So this was a super quick guide on how to start on the ice sheet in Naked Brutality. I hope I was able to help you pass these harsh first days. There are a lot more ways of doing it, but this one works for me. If you have any more tips or tricks that can help, please leave them in the comment section below so we can all learn from each other and give Randy a run for his money. If you have any questions or guide suggestions, I will be glad to help you out there. For now, I wish you all a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.